first interview of the day and I bump into my old mate Keith. How's it been going so far? It's, been, it's great, it's been excellent from... We got here on Wednesday, we go back tonight hopefully and it's been very good, excellent. What do you think of Rackley as an event? Oh, it's an amazing venue, a nice plenty of space for you to move around and uh, yeah, at least it's flat as well. And we're quite fortunate We've got the Welsh Game Fair at your place. We do. And um, I'm going to be working with you. September the 9th and 10th. It's going to be great. Put that in your diary because it's going to be really exciting. OK, so thank you very much for listening. Brilliant. Well, let me get you back then. All right, boys, don't worry. Let me get you. the point. I've bumped into Neil here and he's going to tell us a little bit about what he does and what does the show mean to you, Neil? Well, for me, it's a chance to meet customers, for some of it, people that follow us when we're marketing, sporting, hunting and land management. And it also gets a chance to get out and about, meet guys like yourself and see what's current, what's happening. It's been a difficult few years, hasn't it, you know, with a lot of the backlash towards the shooting community and the countryside. And uh, maybe we need to start fighting back, pushing back. I think we do. I think the, the problem is we've got a, a big urban population that are well-meaning, but they're not as well-informed as they could be. And I think guys like you and I have a, an opportunity here to say what does it mean to be a hill keeper or a hill farmer or a crofter and what does it take to produce people's food and what does it take to manage the land sustainably and this idea, I don't know about you, I'm terrified of this idea that we're going to try and rewild go, by going back in time when all the science tells us we've got to go in a different direction. We have to manage the land, we have to watch after the land and the ruminants and animals are part of that. You turn your back on that land and we will be in trouble very, very soon. So, totally like you, we've got a role to play in educating the next generation about healthy food and how that's produced. So, I'm sure we'll be working together yeah, in the very forward to it. near future. Yeah, we're looking forward to it. Thank you very much. Thanks. Cheers. Cheers I'm with my old mate, Nigel. Howdy. At the Ridgeline stand, how's it been so far? It's been very good, and I thought he was going to kiss me then. Wow! Well, <laughs> we go back that far. We could, we could have a kiss, and nobody would talk about it, would they? No, because they know anyway. Yeah. <laughs> right. I hear there's a really good-looking chap standing behind me. Oh, him? Yeah, that's um, that's Gareth. That's you. Uh, that's me, is it? That's you, yeah. How have things been so far? It's been brilliant. Absolutely fantastic. Have what they? a game fair! Yeah, one hundred percent. We have um, never had a game fair as busy as this. Fantastic. Um, and it's all due to um, people that represent us, like yourself, yeah. doing a great job. Yeah, um, ambassadors, isn't it? You know, and it, it does help when people are wearing clothes out in the real world. They get a sense of, you know, they work. Yeah. You know, I've got your kex on today. Yeah. Um, but you, you need to start designing the pants because I'm, I'm going through them like um, hot cakes. Pants are difficult to develop. It's, it's one what, underpants? <laughs> yeah, but they don't last very long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's a really difficult thing to develop and get right because so many people have wear so many different styles. No, I, agree. I mean, you've got the, like Aaron Williams, so you'll design a pair of jeans. Yeah. Or yeah. like what we've tried to do there, design a pair of trousers that when they're wet, yeah. they're not cold as well. Yeah. But it's just trying to get that message across. But I think that the guys back in the office or back in the design team have got something up their sleeve for you. Oh, I'm looking forward because you know what? This bum patch here. You see that? Yep. Brilliant. Honestly, you know the thin pair that you, yeah. you sent me, the ones, the lightweight ones? Yeah. Been using them this summer. A couple of showers, you walk it off, you're not wet. Right. You know, it, it's it's looking at what the consumer and the customer wants right. and listening. You know, we designed the coats together, haven't we? Yeah. We worked on things. Yeah, yeah, and I think that, that that's what it's about. And if yeah. we can get more of that affordable stuff onto the market, for the farmers, for the hunters, for the shooters, yeah. for the fishers, you know, I think it's a good thing. We bang on about it, but, you know, you, what's the point in developing something that people can't afford? Exactly. It's got to be affordable, my yeah. child. You're yeah. dead right. Anyway, I'm just going to say... Great to see you again. Nice. Have you grown a little bit? Well, do you know, with the assistance of yourself... <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> I was going to say he's a little bugger, but... <laughs> He's catching up with me. Good to see Well, I've been lured into this fantastic tent. I thought I was going on safari the second I seen all this leather and the big guns in the back there. And can you introduce yourselves? My name is John and I work at John Rigby & Co. Slade Stevens, uh, gun maker with uh, John Rigby & Co. So boys, um, how has the game fair at Ragley gone so far? It's been really busy. We've had a lot of punters coming in 
Friday was uh, more of one of the serious days. Saturday we had, it was a lot busier. The parties have been good. We're all really, really tired. Ready to go home. <laughs> but it's been really good. It's been a really good weekend. Work hard, play hard. Exactly right. Exactly right. Are we going to go over and have a look at these uh, guns you've got over here and just have a bit of a yeah, bit of an introduction to them? Of course. Let's take a look at the rifles. Okay. I'll follow you guys. So here we are. We've got uh, three vintage shotguns, uh, 12 bore, one pair, and they're mid 90s. They were produced, and then the rifles are big game Highland Stalker um, line, and these are current production rifles. We're looking at a 9.3 by 62, 450 Rigby, 450 Rigby, 416 Rigby, and then the new uh, box lock in uh, 500 Nitro. Wow, these these are some awesome guns. They are. Thank you. Yeah, we work hard on them. Try to bring a variety to the show to show everyone what we're about. And then we've got some of our uh, London Best rifles in the glass cabinets back here as well. Wow. Is there any chance I can get my hands on that one? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if, I, if I give you that. Thank you. Wow. It is empty. So that's a new rifle that we're working on. Um, so that's the first of the, the new style. This is the first of the new That's style. number one. And what's the caliber of this? See. So uh, this is a 500 Nitro. So we're going to be offering it in a 470, uh, 450, 400, and then um, 600 Nitro as well. So we produced these 90 years ago, and this is the first time we've re-released it. Uh, since then, we've been doing the side locks. So that's that's a uh, more detail and uh, difficult to build. Since the box lock, we'll be able to bring it into a more competitive pricing. And this could drop virtually anything. Oh, you, yeah. It's oh, good yeah. for everything. Big planes game, dangerous game, you know, yeah. Wow. That's some good. Well, boys, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, guys. I'll be taking this home with me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wish. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank you very much. The smell of leather has really brought me into the shop. Come on, introduce yourself and tell me what the game fair means to yourself. Well, I'm Josh. I'm the marketing manager at Brandicos. Uh, well, the Game Fair is just the biggest event of the year for us, you know, it's absolutely amazing. As a, especially as an online company, it's amazing to get out and see everybody. You know, it's a perfect opportunity to come along and try the boots on for size, you know. It's, uh, it's one of these things, the nature of our business, we can only sell direct to customer. Um, you know, with the price of the boots that they are to make, you know, it's the only way that we can bring it at a competitive price. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we need to make sure that we get to as many shows as possible. Get out, meet you all and, you know, get some boots on feet, so. Uh, do you know what? A farmer, I'm a shooter as well, fisherman as well. So, you know, if your feet aren't right, nothing goes right for the day. That's so, if a wet feet, you know, you feel grumpy, you miss the birds, you can't catch the fish, you want to go home to a hot bath and relax. So, I'm a big believer in buying good footwear. So, this has attracted me. So, I, I might be taking a pair of these home with me. <laughs> I'm not going to say too much, but watch this space. <laughs> Can't wait for it, looking forward to it. You know, it's one of these. And we know how hard you are on boots, but with leather that thick, we'll see what you can do to these. Well, uh, anybody's going to break them from yeah, Honda to Land Rovers, everything I everything have. breaks down. But I, I've got yeah, I've got faith in these. I think I these have. are going to last me a lifetime, of as course. long as I don't live too yeah, long. <laughs> I have absolutely no doubt whatsoever. You know, it's one of these things you say, you're going to invest in two things. It's a good pair of, foot, a good, good pair of boots, boots and a good mattress, because if you're in one, you're in the other. Well, I've got one. I need the other now. That's the one. Good to Top see man. You. Cheers. All the best. Thank you. He's tuning in, baby. And when people tell you there's nothing to do at the game fair, there's plenty to do at the game fair. Listening to fantastic music, buying wonderful clothes, guns, watching the gun dogs, fishing, shooting, hunting. But I'm, I'm going to cut in so this, this gentleman can introduce himself. Just finishing the frame. He's got to finish the frame. This is what musicians are blemming like. How are you doing? I'm very good. Uh, my name's Nick. I'm, from, I'm the boss owner of Premier Guns. We're here on Gunmakers Row. And the rain is keeping off all weekend so far. I've got to say one thing. 
and I'm sure you've heard it a few times. You look like the best dressed man on the show ground. No, I can't accept that. Surely not. But I've been, it's, I've been told it all day. <laughs> you can see it. Uh, are you sure? The look, tar- what, what is it? The face, the tartan waistcoat? Well, it's definitely not the, the face. Charisma. It's definitely the jacket. It's, it's the jacket, the waistcoat. You know what? You're just looking dapper. Charisma, uniqueness and talent. That, 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 I'll, I'll take that. Watch her, she's after a gun and she can't shoot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that's absolutely fine. Well, she's come to the right place here. We've got a four or five hundred guns here, yeah. So, and What's the show been? It's, it's been OK. Yeah. Um, every year we go through mental anguish and in anticipation. Is it going to be dreadful? Obviously, we, when we went through COVID, yeah. we came out of the shows, uh, the British shooting show, the, the game fair. It was actually like a shot up the uh, in the yeah. arm. Yeah. <laughs> That was nearly the was arse word. Don't worry about it. We, we managed to steer it. It really was. The Game Fair in 20... Let me get this, the year right. In 2021 yeah. was probably the most cash bouncy Game Fair we'd ever had. Wow. Yeah. We probably did a month's taking... And this isn't a joke. We probably did a month's taking in three days. That's fantastic. Uh, and it was like... It was just like, you know, pennies... Raining. Yeah. Now, last year, which would have been 2022... Yeah. Uh, ...was quite quiet. Yeah. So we were all the same guys were on Gunmakers Row, all the same staff were suddenly going in their uniforms, all the same guns were sitting in the racks, but it was a little more selected. This yeah. year has been, an, unexpectedly, has been an improvement on, on 2022, which is now 2023, so it's, it's been okay. So, so let's talk it in, in fictional amounts of money. Let's say we took 100... So we, let's say we took £200... Yeah. And uh, yes, in tw- no, a hundred pounds yeah. in 2021. Okay. Then last year we only took about 40 or 50 pounds. Oh, okay. So that wasn't so th- quite so. So this year, said, but this, but so far we're headed between the two. It's quite good. It's so quite good. it's going in the right direction, yeah, it's isn't it? in the 70s or 80s. Yeah, well, yeah. do you know what? I think by walking around the rows and seeing the people, the shops, and everybody's got a smile on their face, it's, it's tough times, but people have come here and they're sporting it. There's a great community, there's a great camaraderie, and, you know, for people like you, it's a long game. It's a long game, and we need our supporters and we need the people that are standing on them pegs to come and buy the guns. Well, at the end of the day, it's a two-way street, isn't it? So, in a sense, what, what we bring to the table is important. And what the game fair brings to us is also important. We need what's going on. They need us too. So it's it's and it's not one one element isn't greater than the other. No, no. We, it's a we, symbiotic we, we, relationship. Oh, a wonderful word. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you're thinking this Welshman's a lot cleverer than what he looks. Uh, yeah, um, no, you're wonderful. I always, <laughs> I, I, I always knew you were super bright. So, it, but it is. It's certainly. It's also. It's also important to. Because obviously, now for a retailer, there's two other factors going on. Yeah. There's the, we're here to show we're here, we're here to flag us yeah. up. We're here, we're, we're this company, we're William Evans and we're whoever we are. Yeah. So it's almost like a, a, a 3D business card. Yeah. So that's one element of being at a show like this. And of course, the other element is that we've actually got racks full of stuff. Yeah. And people who maybe live in more rural areas or don't live, don't have a particular dealer particularly near them, yeah. they can sort of, oh, it's, it's, it's July. Yeah. Let's see if we can find a Silver Pigeon 3 at the game. But let's see if we can find a, a Krieg off. Let's yeah, see if we exactly. can find a Brett. Let's see if we've got a Browning 725. Let's see if they've got a 32 inch. Ooh, talking about a Browning 725, I fancy one. Well, we've got loads of them. I'll go and have a look. So, what I'm saying is, is so it's also a marketplace too. So, there's lots going on. Yeah. Uh, we, we here at PG try and do a little bit of a social thing with Alex serving drinks and, and flirting yeah. with all the guys and, you know, and, and having a good time. And it's important to have somewhere social. Like we've got the sofas there. I love them sofas. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, it's just, it's just because it isn't. We're not just... Things happen at Game yeah. Fairs. I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm not saying I have, but deals are done here. Of course. Yeah. And people might come and have a look, and they'll yeah. come back and buy yeah, it yeah. again. Yeah, they yeah. don't have to take it away today. No, no, no. no, no. In fact, it we, gives them we, an idea of what you've got. We can quantify it, because we can, we can quantify it. We can look back at the sales uh, next week and the week after, and the week yeah. after, and the week after. Yeah. We can see that those that come from the Game Fair. It's obvious. Yeah. It's so it's I a long game. game I looked at this. Can I look at it again, please? Yeah. I put a deposit, ten pound deposit at the game fair. I've got to pick it up. All that. Fantastic. You know where it's coming from. Yeah. Right. Big question. Are you coming to the Welsh game fair? I want to. 
Well, with that jacket, if I don't see you there, I'll be disappointed. Well, oh. I, we want it. We, we don't know whether to do this again. Last year we did this. We had like the gazebo. Yeah, I've seen, seen it. I've seen it. We really ought to be bringing some guns, really. Yes. So it's, it's knowing how. It's, it's ignorance. I don't know how to make the transition. Okay. Obviously, I, Vaniol do a really good job there. They yeah. had an amazing stand. Yeah. And it was a really good fair. Yeah. Uh, so we, it's, it's how we're going to do it. We're Are building. We so last year was the first, wasn't it, up yeah, yeah, in yeah. North Wales. And I think we're building. It was very successful. I think this I year... I spent about three days pissed. <laughs> I got into my car. Uh, to, to, uh, 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 I, I don't think I was driving. Okay. <laughs> And Alex said, are you sure you're, you're, you're okay to drive? I said, yeah. of course I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At least you were sensible enough to not to drive. Well, what I'm saying is, yeah, we had a great time. Yeah. And uh, John Fried, he did a barbecue. Uh, and uh, did I, Was he there? I played at the barbecue. Yes, yeah, yeah. yes. Uh, and, it, yeah, it was, it was a good... It's yeah. a, and I like the... I like the people. The locals were fun. Yeah. Everyone was working together. Yeah. There's a genuine sense of countryside and community. And 10 miles up the road. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So don't forget, I'm going to be the face of the food hall. So I'm going to be there. Oh, yes, oh, right, I'm okay. going to be an ambassador with James and the guys yeah, 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 and yeah. Kai. You know, he's yeah, yeah, cooking. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's going to cook three of my lambs. So I want to see you there yeah. in this bright yellow jacket, if washed I, if I can off get that hoisong sauce. If I can get it through the dry cleaners, I've got it. <laughs> Hey, all the best in Thank business you. and everything. Thank Thanks. you very much. Thanks for your time. Cheers. Thank you. Well, I've just passed this lovely marquee and I could not pass without smelling the smell of venison, venison and pheasant burger. You know, this is what sustainability is all, all about. Absolutely amazing. As a guy that does his own shooting, I am loving it. Now, introduce yourselves, please. I'm Nancy. I'm Sarah. And we're Eat Wild. Uh, actually, it's my sister, Louisa Clutterbuck, who is the CEO of the British Game Assurance, and this is a spin-off of her company. And the whole idea is to try to get people to be less afraid of eating game and to know that they can eat it every single day of their lives and replace all the other meat that they're eating instead because it's a much better source of protein, very low in saturated fat, and it's got uh, very few nasties in it, so no horm growth hormones, antibiotics, anything like that. So, um, and they've had a happy life. They've yeah. had a happy life. Oh, well, I'm sold. So, I'm going to be um, the ambassador for the Welsh Game Fair. Oh, great. And I'm in the Telegraph today with my grey squirrel burgers. Ah, oh, now I have a recipe for grey squirrel in here. Well, can I take it with me? So, yeah, please. please do. Take this. Wow. And do some swapping. It's also got <laughs> the website on here. You can buy all of our meat online and it will go absolutely straight to your house and into the freezer. Mm -hmm. Everything is gluten free. Everything is gluten -free. These girls are on the cell. They could sell sand to the Arabs <laughs> and, and ice to the Eskimos. I'm really not Thank you for the lovely burger. It was beautiful. Absolute pleasure. Right, come back pleasure. We'll come and see you at the Welsh Game Show. Thank you very much. Would you like to take some Well, I've bumped into some old friends. Introduce yourselves. I'm David Jelly, my wife. Jane. Jane Jelly. I love that name. That's EY. I know. <laughs> so, what brings you to the Game Fair? Oh, we just love the outdoor, the countryside and the atmosphere here. So many people, a great day. Oh three days out actually it's been fantastic the weather's kind it's great lovely you've had the three days here three days <laughs> yes no, it's great because everyone from anywhere comes but it's country life fresh air dogs the food lots of different types of food and for the ladies there's lots of shopping um, yeah, you know, you can't... Someone didn't look happy there when he said a lot of shopping. <laughs> I know, but then he takes me down the, uh, the gun... Gunmaker's Row, and gun we have a look down there. And we have a look down there. Yeah. No. Have you invested in anything uh, uh, on the show? Uh, my wife's bought a few clothes, a couple of pairs of boots, so and I bought a sausage roll. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to comment on the sausage <laughs> roll. Any new guns coming out? Uh, not this time. I bought a new gun when I was in Wales last year at the Welsh Show, yes. which was fantastic, and yeah. I believe that's happening in September this year. 9th and 10th. I am going to be the ambassador in the food tent this year, so I hope to see you both there, eating, drinking, celebrating the fantastic rural lives we've got, and that is something that I would be so glad to see you at. Um, there's a very good chance we will be there. 
fabulous. A very good chance. <laughs> Lovely. Thank you very Thank much. You. Well, I popped into the Country Alliance tent. Introduce yourself, young man. Good to see you. My name's Mo, and I run press and media for the Countryside Alliance. And it's been a fantastic game fair so far. I'm slacking a bit now. I'm getting a bit tired. <laughs> but day three. Part of the, day three, made it this far. I was up nice and early this morning on the, uh, in the game theatre uh, talking about, well, the biggest challenge, of course, is in the countryside is fighting back against all these people trying to ban meat and dairy. And as you know, Gareth, we've been working on this together. Yeah. Uh, in Cornwall, we got the, uh, the council there actually being supportive of farmers. I, I, I've got to say congratulations. I was Thank buzzing when I read that. Honestly, Thank it you. was just like a ray of sunshine. You know, why? the reason it needed to happen is we spend so much time, me, you, Rachel over in our Countryside Alliance, Wales, yeah. fighting back in the media against some of the nonsense that we hear in these councils. Yeah. And it, it's the time has come now to get on the front foot and get as many councils pledging their support to far for farmers. Yeah. And there's actually no reason why any of them shouldn't do it. I totally agree. And do you know what? I am seeing the tide turning. You know, we've had a little bit of a penny pinching time. Money mm -hmm. hasn't been as, you know, a lot of these big companies that were producing the so-called, you know, ethical foods, as in the processed yep. gloop, I call it, yep. are falling off the edge of a cliff, which, not that I'm glad to see, but I, I'm starting to think to myself, let's start to look at where our food comes from yeah, absolutely. let's start to build a better britain together mm. and we can do this because we've got the people on the ground that understand you yeah. know the soil the grass temperate climate mm. we don't need to be importing as much food no. and of course the scary thing is is it you know they try and do it through the free market way it's not working people aren't buying up to it no. so they're going to now try and enforce it and bring it in through the schools without in some cases parents even being aware of it yeah. and that's what's really concerning and yeah. so part of what we've all been doing is trying to expose this and get it out into the open so that councils are on the front foot going forward and that's that's really what we need to do because some of it was getting really worrying Oxfordshire yeah. Oxfordshire is a rural really county course right course. yeah now what on earth is going on there yeah. and, and I've got to say this I try not to get too political but you know the Liberal Democrats are working really hard to try and connect with the countryside but it's a Liberal Democrat run council in Oxfordshire that's done this yeah. what's going on yeah what's going on yeah you know, yeah you practice what yeah. practice Absolutely. what you preach and we have to challenge every single one of these councils that do it yeah absolutely. because you know they should be buying local they should be buying mm. seasonal and they should be buying sustainable and environmentally produced and food that is the key. and they've got it that is on the key. whatever your diet yeah. is it's there on their doorstep yeah. and i think we're in a good position now that we can push yeah. these councils to absolutely. start to think you know and cornwall has set the precedent yeah. so good on the people of cornwall well good done on, yeah. well done yeah. and then north northamptonshire They've done it too. Yeah. And we'll see who's going to follow next. We've got some in the in the pipeline, but I won't say who they are just yet. Oh, look at this. It's going to get good. <laughs> you keep up the good work, you mate. Too, yeah. Bro. Keep doing we what you're doing for farming. And well, the smell of leather really brought me in to this marquee. So um, you can introduce yourself and tell us what the game fair means to you. Yeah, I'm Alistair Croup from Croups. Uh, we're traditional English manufacturers of leather goods 1970s family business started the, we make traditional products um, they are game shooting people like nice leather nice canvases the game fair is everything um, this is the showpiece for the industry uh, shop piece. window yeah yeah and it also is important because um, it is basically turning people's mind on to the game season so we're a week or two off grouse without the game uh, it rumbles on this basically says to people we're in it now this is what we do this is what we like yeah. and um, get out shooting well I have to say car parks are chocked the place is absolutely buzzing yeah, yeah. and you know it's last day but it's still good feeling here and and for me you know it just shows us a lot of support for you know the game and the countryside pursuits a friday and saturday w was really really busy all day and you'd be amazed how many foreign guests come from all over holland spain australia our shooting and our game season is the best in the world and people love coming here because there's nothing like this show in the world totally agree there's with smaller you smaller versions <laughs> and, but that, um, that are niche but this is the best in the world and this is why they come yeah, exactly. That's why they travel all over the world to come here. Yep. Thank you very much. Thank you. Are we ready? I might not even have to introduce this lady, but I'm going to get her to introduce herself because she's in the old uh, Ridgeline tent. Come on, who are you? Where do you come from? My name's Melanie. No, I'm 
My name's Charlotte Ashley and I'm a farmer from Cumbria. And uh, you came up to do a little bit of filming with me for the Ridgeline, didn't you? I did come to your house, yes. We are nice, we had a, a bit of a time. Yeah, no, it was lovely, really lovely, beautiful, beautiful. Got to meet my uh, family. I did, I met all of your family. Lovely pictures, lovely sheep, really nice Be- sheep. Better sheep than what you've got? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. See yeah. what I did no, there? No, to be fair though, no, do you know what? I'm, I'm going down a new line, I'm going down a new line. We're going, Welsh? We're going quantity, not quality. Oh! I've decided, like, literally getting rid of all these fancy things. It's just not working, man. No, no, no. Fancy's no good. You've got Compare to get some... yourself to nobody. That's what I've come to. Like, listen to no one. No one's going to be better than you. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's You know what I mean? Like, we've got some really fancy stuff at the minute, and it looks amazing. There's one of them. What good's that? Like, do you know what I mean? Totally, and then I've got totally some... agree. Some like really rangy mules, and they've all had two lambs. They're spitting them out. They've not taken any hurt. They didn't need lambing. They didn't need touching. They don't want you to touch them, and they're away. And you're earning more money off that than you are off these little fancy Dutch spotted blue Texel what's the no, thingies. Th- there's good money in it, but there's a lot of time going into watching after them. And a lot if of you time. haven't got the time and you know the patience, you're better off on a commercial. Oh, hundred percent. It really uh, is. Well, um, it was coming to yours, and I just thought, you know what? They were just so low input. Yeah. And, and they're sorting themselves out and yeah. it does make a massive difference and like what's the point in com- you look, yeah it was nice to be in the paper for high prices at the auction but actually where's it getting you when you're taken to the collection centre and the grading out do you know what I mean it doesn't it's no. not really it no, doesn't the head's in the bin straight away of course it is of course yeah, it is so it makes no difference does it but no. as well I always look at that on everything so when I'm looking for cattle always yeah. commercial the only thing I pride myself is when I looked for a wife, I went top grade. You did, she's beautiful. Look at her. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Pedigree breeding. She is. Angle she is. CDNA. <laughs> she's over there, but she can't hear us. <clears throat> no, she's <laughs> right, we're going to catch you up later on for a little bit of a chat. Yes, we but are. You've had a great game fair so Yeah, far. It's, no, it's been grand. It's the first time I've ever been. Um, Nigel invited me, and it's been amazing. I've loved it. I really have. I've loved Super it. Super duper, and let's catch up very soon. Yes, be a tent. So this marquee pulled me in for the reason we could see the big house behind us. Now, will you introduce yourself? Uh, yeah, my name's Lisa. I'm looking after the marketing at uh, Ragley Hall and for the whole Ragley estate. Well, you should be proud of this fantastic game fair. We have been walking around. We've come all the way down from Wales and it is a showcase, a showcase of everything countryside so congratulations thank you thank you we're very pleased with how it's gone it all seems to have gone very smoothly feedback's been very good from all the people we've talked to um and we're pleased with how our own stand's looking and helping people to understand more about the whole estate so uh that's that's what why we've got a stand um people would wonder why on earth ragley hall would bother to exhibit at an event that's at ragley hall but (laughs) this is all about us getting people to understand the whole estate so uh, that's important to us at the moment Marketing, sharing your story is a big part of business today and, uh, you know, this is a wonderful estate, but it must have a massive upkeep. Oh yes, absolutely, and, that, and that's why the, the, the estate has had to diversify into so many ways, as all estates do, they've all got to find ways of, of making a living and um, people are aware of the events that go on at, at Ragley and, and, and know about Ragley Hall. Um, and that's just one aspect of the, the revenue for the estate. We've got a huge farm, woodland businesses, holiday property lets, um, and, uh, and a butcher's that's on site that takes lamb and venison and pheasant from the estate as well. So it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a complicated jigsaw of businesses that all work together. But everything's local seasonal sustainable Absolutely. and on the same estate so you know what you're ticking a lot of boxes for a lot of people you're not far from big cities here as well so no, it's a good position lots of cities and lo- all the road networks and yet it's a five and a half thousand acre estate that uh, you know works pretty hard and uh, the environmental impact is very important yeah uh, you know all the things that people don't see about an event like this where we have to take a thousand head of sheep and 1,600 lambs off the estate 28 days before an event. Yeah, They've all got to go somewhere, yeah. <laughs> uh, and they can't come back on until the lamb's recovered. So uh, that's all part of the, the environmental programme. And our farming, this is why we want people to understand more about the farming and the field margins and the niche crops that we grow. It's not just a, a, a purely commercial business. There's a huge environmental message as well. Well, that looks like I could spend a day down in Ragley 
sharing your story. So, Mrs. Marketing and Mr. Jones might be spending more time. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Here we go. I really don't need to introduce this gentleman, do I? Um, we've just. Well, it might help me remember who yeah. I am, Gary. <laughs> oh, there you go then. <laughs> introduce yourself to everybody on my socials. Paul Whitehouse, amateur angler. Well, do you know what? You might be an amateur angler, but <laughs> you have put angling on the map, and I think it's really important that we get people like you, high profile, speaking in places like this. And I want to congratulate you. Well, thank Shake you Shake your hand, much. because do you know what? We need that enthusiasm for the next generation to understand you know that where the food comes from yeah. you know fishing yeah, farming yeah. yeah everybody in here and across the world is going to need either a farmer or a fisherman yeah. every single day of their life yeah i know i mean i've uh, i know you you like to tell it how it is gareth but you know i recently did a, uh, a couple of documentaries about river pollution yeah uh, we cite the water companies a lot yeah we talk about agricultural pollution yeah but, you know, I, and I'm obviously very keen to understand your perspective because I, I know that there's a, a drive for cheap food all the time. I'm not sure it's a good thing. No, no, I'm mate, not even sure mate, it's a good no, thing. No, no, you've hit the nail on the head. Mm. Cheap food mm. comes at a cost, okay? Yeah. Cheap co food comes at a cost. The well, environment, it, it, exactly. the animals, and the farmer. And it's, and, it's, and, it's and the same with water. Cheap water comes at a cost. Yeah. You know, you make yeah. your saving by yeah. getting rid of the sweat. So, yeah. So I'm, I, you know, I'm, it's very easy to point the finger and just go, stop that. Yeah. But unless you understand the story behind it, you're never going to get very far, are you? Well, so. I'll tell you straight forward. I believe all this has been driven by government policies, okay, mm. and as well, and this is really important, is supermarket pushing yeah. prices down. So when yeah. milk was cheaper than water, you mm. know. When they sell it as a lost leader, devalue mm. it, mm. it is a massive hit for the farmer. Yeah. So some farmers, you know, can't afford to mm. get the right tools to work. We're seeing what water companies are doing. They are dumping so much poo into the waterways, it's polluting so much rivers, killing our fish. Mm. So we need to work together. We need yeah. to work together to find solutions. You, as a high profile person, can make these differences. You know, Fergal's doing it. There's a lot yeah, of people. Yeah, Fergal, Fergal's great. There's a lot of people. You know, I'm a Johnny come lately. I always say, go to this, to, to this as, game. But as as long as Johnny came to the game, that's the important <laughs> thing, mate. Well, we might score in the last minute, mightn't we, and yeah. win, win the cup for you. Yeah. So, you know, I, I, I'm very well aware that, you know, I'm just one of many people who have been banging the drum for a while. Yeah. Be, you know, and we, as individuals, we have a responsibility. But yes, farming does as well. You know, I know that certain farmers are very aware of, of what their impact on the environment is and now you shape it you know yeah, so yeah, there, there's you know the onus is on all of us but um you know i think at least now people are talking about it as an issue and talking about you know how we can change policy and make sure that our rivers do start to become cl cleaner again yeah you know, so. and i'd love to invite you up to our farm my family's been on the same farm for 375 years okay. and i would like to take you and bob yeah. to uh, oh, you want him there as well? Well, <laughs> I want you both to come up to this beautiful yeah. lake that me and my yeah. brother used to go as kids. Mm -hmm. And now Welsh Water are draining it. They're draining mm -hmm. it and they're taking the water out because they don't want to spend money on it. I'd love to take you and talk about our memories up there because I've fished there, you know, with bubble float, with fly. Yeah. It's a beautiful place. You're a poacher then, really. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Aren't we all? Well, <laughs> no, well, it's interesting you say that because... I'm hopefully going to do a follow-up to the two documentaries we did. And, uh, you know, I do want to ask some tough questions of farming practices. And, yeah. I, and if I didn't, it would be irresponsible. Totally. So I might, well, I might well take you up on that. Thank All you right. very much for the time. My Keep pleasure, up the good Greg. work. Thank you very much. Last week, Wednesday, I was sitting in one of these with Griff from Cluid Agri and absolutely loved the machine. I'm here now with... So I'm Neil, the DSM for Polaris Britain. Yeah, back-to-back -back show. So we've come from the Royal Welsh down on the Thursday, straight into another show, straight into the game fair, Ragley Hall. Yeah, it's a big show for us. Do this every year. A yeah. lot of people here. Yeah, I can't, to be honest, I don't know the, the exact attendance figures. We'll probably get them after the show, but yeah. probably one of the better shows that we do in the UK. I mean, it's a proper mix of people down yeah. here for us. Yeah, it's yeah. a great platform for us to showcase all the vehicles, right from the entry level sort of sportsmen's right through to the big sort of range of crews that you've got sitting here. I'm noticing in our area, you guys are picking up some serious trade. 
you know, you must be doing something right. Two of my cousins, and they most probably the tightest farmers in North Wales, have bought one. So, you know, it's going well for you. Without a doubt, yeah, and it's not just sort of your area, that's across the country and across the globe. I mean, we really listen to our end consumers and the customers. I mean, that machine, the diesel, that's really put us back on the map. To my knowledge, it's the only diesel that's been designed, developed in the UK for the UK market. I mean, it's a completely different customer profile from what our cousins in the States use them for. So we were able, with our Apoli factory that we brought on board in 2014, we were actually able to up-spec a lot of our machines to suit the customer needs and demands. And that's what the UK customers have been screaming out for for years, and we gave it to them. And the market shares seen it gradually increase year on year on year. And we're now number one in the UK, thanks to the Apollo factory and your guys' customers' hard work and efforts. So. Do you know what? I'm shocked that you're number one in the UK. I have noticed a massive increase in them. But, you know, congratulations, because good machine sell. But I think you hit the nail on the head. You've gone for what the customer asks, and it's definitely different to what they want in the USA and other countries. And, you know, you're not just in the farming side of things. These are big within the shooting industry and, and the game industry yeah, as well. Yeah, many different sectors, equine, forestry, um, hunting, farming, equine, yeah, cross-section of even B2B now, some of the councils, state management. So there's a, there's a broad spectrum of, of customers that we sell into, for sure. Yeah. Maybe one day you'll get to sell me one. I'll yeah. <laughs> no, appreciate it. No, thank you very much. It's been amazing, and good luck for the rest of the show. Yeah, and you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you very much. Ragley Park, the game fair. What an achievement. We are blown away with the organisation, the hospitality, the food, the friendship and the merchandise there. We've had a wonderful day and um, let's bring it on to Wales and the Welsh Game Fair next in the Vaino on the 9th and 10th of September. Brilliant.